Hey everyone, we're going to see how to consume remote data from remote third-party web services through our Go application. So if you've been keeping up in previous, previous examples, I demonstrated how to create a RESTful API using Go, so that way other applications could consume data from us. Uh, but this time it's going to be the other direction. We're going to be issuing HTTP requests from within Go to some remote web service and get that data back. So very useful stuff. So inside of my terminal, we're going to create a new project. I am within my Go path, uh, but we're going to call this project, let's say, make directory HTTP project. We're going to navigate into it, and we're going to create a file called main.go. And you can really call it whatever you want. Um, for this example, uh, main.go is fine. I'm then going to open up this project in my favorite editor of choice. So this is going to be Atom by GitHub. And a little bit of advanced warning here, I do have a lot of plugins installed in Atom. So a lot of these plugins will do code complete and things like import packages as soon as I use them, just little convenience things. Um, so uh, I, you will be able to see everything that goes on as far as the code, uh, but just note that some of this stuff is being taken care of for me. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to say package main, and we want to create our main function. Uh, so the next step is we need to really figure out, well, what API do we want to use? I don't personally have an API uh, created and ready to go for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of some free ones on the internet. Uh, so the first and probably uh, best way to test uh, your, your code is to use this service called httpbin.org. Uh, so you can actually uh, hit this website with different a HTTP requests, whether that be get requests, post requests, whatever it may be, and then it'll give you responses back. Uh, you could also find some free API online. Um, for example, for, for Git requests, I'm actually going to use this Coinbase API to get, get uh, Bitcoin prices, um, but it's totally up to you. Um, just the point of the matter is, well, we want to do a Git request, and then we're going to do a post request because they're, they're very different uh, in setup. So going back to our code inside of our main function, uh, let's go ahead and formulate that request. So we're going to say response error equals http.get and we need to provide it a URL. So this time around we're going to be using uh, this Bitcoin API from Coinbase. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in. Um, and if it fails, um, well maybe there was some kind of issue with the server, uh, but we're going to catch it. So we're going to say if error not equal to nil, we're going to say fmt.printf uh, we're going to print some formatted data. We're going to say uh, the HTTP request failed with error. And then we're going to say um, whatever this error is. So let's, let's add it as, a, as an option. If it didn't fail, uh, that means that we got a response, uh, some kind of, of 200 response or some kind of success response. But out of the box, uh, response isn't really something that we can work with. Um, what we're expecting is we're expecting uh, some nicely formatted JSON data, um, but that, that won't exist if we, if we try to just print out what response is. So we, we need to read from it. We need to read from the response. So we can say else, and what we can do is we can say data. Uh, we're going to uh, forget about the error on the data, but we're going to say equals ioutil.readall, and we're going to pass in response.body. And then we're going to say fmt.println. Um, the, the data is going to be a slice of bytes. So what we're going to do is we're going to say string, and we're going to say data. And in theory, that should print out uh, what we're looking for. And we can actually test that right now. So if I go back to my terminal, and I say go run star.go, it ran. And it, and it spit out exactly what we were looking for. That's what, that's what the API website says we're going to get, and that's what we got. So we, we know that very simple get request worked out fine. And get requests, as everyone uh, probably knows, is for getting information. If we wanted to create information, chances are we'd do a put or a post or something along those lines, uh, which we're, we're going to see right now. So it's a little different, though. Um, so with a post request, we're going to be sending JSON data um, because that's what most, most API endpoints call for. Sometimes they call for form data, but for this example, we're going to be using JSON data. So we need to create that data. So we're going to say JSON data equals 
And we're actually going to create a map right now before we before we marshal it into actual JSON. So we're going to say map. The key is going to be a string. And the value is also going to be a string. So we're going to say first name. We'll call it Nick. Last name is the key. Value is Raboy. And we can save it. Uh, it's showing a little error right now because we, we've declared it, but we haven't used it yet. Uh, but we will. Now what we want to do is we want to marshal this map into actual JSON. So we can say JSON value. We're going to ignore the error. And we're going to say json.marshal. And we're going to pass in JSON data. So we have that JSON value. Now we want to actually issue that, that request. So we can say response error. And we're, we're not going to use the colon this time because we already have those variables created. We're just going to say equals http.post. Uh, we're going to provide a URL. This time around, since I don't have a post URL handy, we're just going to use HTTP, HTTP bin. Uh, we're going to use this post endpoint, which will return the post data that we send. So let's try it out. We're going to be using application slash JSON as the header uh, for the content type. So we know we're sending that type of data. And we also need to buffer our JSON into bytes. So we're going to say bytes dot new buffer. And we're going to be passing in JSON value. Uh, what we can do is because it's we're getting the same kind of response and error back as we did from the get request, we can copy and paste our code to see it print out from the from the terminal. So I saved it. Let's go ahead and run it. Let's say uh, go run star dot go. So it did both. It, it got our, our our Bitcoin information. It also gave us a response, a JSON response from HTTP bin. Uh, so uh, it recognizes the data that we sent. Uh, and it responded back to it as JSON. So everything went very smooth. Now, the way that I demonstrated isn't the only way to make post requests. Um, as I've seen on Stack Overflow, uh, there, there was another recommended way. And it, it's fine. It takes a little more work. Uh, it might be cleaner in the long run. Um, but that's totally up for you to decide. So let's go ahead and try that way out. And, and you can be the judge on which one you prefer. So I'm going to comment this out. This, this type of request for the post. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be using JSON still, so this can remain. Uh, in the end, we're still gonna get the same type of response. Uh, what happens in the middle for issuing that request is gonna change slightly. So this time around, uh, what we wanna do is we want to formulate a request with header information. So we can say request. We're gonna ignore the error. And we're going to say request. It's going to be a post request. The URL that we're using is the same URL. As for the body, uh, the body is going to be the same as well. Now we need to add uh, some header information to this request. So we can say request.headers.set. We're going to say content type. And the value for this is going to be application slash JSON. Uh, we need to create our client request. So what we can say is we can say client equals ampersand HTTP dot client. And now we can say response error equals client dot do request. So you can see what we did here. So we, we basically just created a request object. Uh, so we just created our request and then we sent it with the client. And we're getting the same results back. So you can have many headers. Uh, you can add a little more customizations to this. So let's go ahead and try to run it. We should get the same stuff back. Yeah, and we did. Uh, so it, it's, exactly, it's exactly what we expected. So it, it really didn't take us too much code. Uh, to do either of these requests, well, we, we saw three different ways. Um, but in the long run, uh, it, Go makes it very easy to, to issue HTTP requests against remote web services.